In this session, we're going to look at a way to move complex alignments from Civil 3D into InfraWorks. Now, I've got InfraWorks open on my screen. I'm in an active model. Let me zoom in, and the area that we have on screen here is a couple streets where I'd like to create a road connection. These streets were brought in from a shapefile. I'm just going to make a connection between these objects. Now, what I did, I brought up my settings and utilities, and a little bit earlier I said export to IMX and I windowed this area and saved it as an IMX file such that I could do my road design in Civil 3D. Let's jump over to Civil. Here you can see the result of my IMX file. I just started a new drawing, imported the IMX, it brought in the surface from the InfraWorks model as well as the two alignments. From there I created my connecting road, center line alignment. Now I'm not going to win any awards for this, but it is a complex entity. It has compound and reverse curves. After I made my alignment, I generated my profile for this object. At this point, I would like to move the design into InfraWorks. Now, depending on the complexity of your alignment, sometimes InfraWorks may reject your geometry, whether you try and move it via Land XML or via IMX. As an example, let me save this. I'm going to save the drawing and I'll click Export IMX, and it took and saved the IMX in the same directory where my drawing is stored. Let me jump back over to InfraWorks, and I am going to bring up my Data Sources palette. I'll select the IMX I just saved, and I'll click Open. In this case, I'm going to bring in the roads only, not the surfaces, and I'll click OK. There's my roads. Let me double-click to configure this. We'll size this so it fits on screen, and I'm going to pick a rule style here. I'm just going to pick a generic road style for right now. Let me click OK, and then I'll click Close and Refresh. And you can see my road does not exist. That is because the complexity of the alignment is causing it to be rejected by InfraWorks. So, does this mean we cannot bring in the road? Not necessarily. I just have to bring it in a different way. Let me remove this. I'm going to right-click and choose Remove. And instead, I'm going to bring the road geometry over using a 3D shape file. Let me jump back over to Civil 3D. And to bring this over as a shape, I'm going to do one thing first here. I'm going to select my profile. Let me right click, and then in the menu I'll come down and choose Edit Profile Style. This controls the appearance of the profile. Now the styles in Civil 3D are view dependent, so we can see that from a profile view direction, my geometry is going to look blue, which it does. Let me change this to model. What if I'm viewing the profile from a three-dimensional direction? By default, it's going to appear very dark gray. Let me click the color sample. I'll change that to yellow. I'll click OK and OK. Let me pan out, and then I'm going to hold my shift key and the wheel on the mouse. We'll push the drawing back, and then let me pan over to the 3D view here. And since I made that profile yellow, it stands out very well on screen. Now if I zoom in, we can see a three-dimensional representation of that geometry. So this would represent the proposed design for the center line of the road, both horizontal and vertical. I am going to export this geometry and bring it into InfraWorks. I'll start by exploding what's here. Let me launch the explode command. I'll click my object. I'll press enter. If I hover over this, you can see it's now a uh, it's a block. Let me press enter to relaunch explode, and I'll explode this a second time. If I hover over this now, we can see it's a 3D polyline. If I click the 3D polyline, it is composed of very many grips. I'd like to weed this down a little bit. Let's go to the Modify tab, and in the Edit Geometry panel, I'll click the Weed button. This allows us to remove redundant grips. Let me choose the 3D polyline, and you can go through and tweak these values if you like to remove more or less grips. I'm going to keep the defaults in this case. It's going to knock out about 1,350 out of almost 2,000 grips. Let me click OK, and if I select the object now, we can see that there are fewer grips to represent this shape. That'll work for now. To export this as a 3D shape file, I'm going to type Map Export. I'll press Enter. And then I'm going to save this in my sample directory. I'll just call this custom road. Since I'm exporting this as a shape, I can choose point, line, or polygon. This is a linear object, so I'll choose line. I'm going to come over and click the select objects button. I would like to export this 3D polyline only. Finally, I'll go to the options tab. We can see that it's automatically taking the coordinate system on the drawing, so it's, it's going to have the coordinate system assigned to the shape file. Let me come down to driver options, and from here I'll choose three-dimensional shape file. I will then click OK. We can see one object of one selected and exported in one second. That's a good sign. At this point, we would quit this drawing without saving. No need to save this, especially after exploding the profile. And uh, then I can return to it later and make changes if I want. Let me go back to InfraWorks, and we will import the alignment. 
From the Data Sources palette, I will choose Shape. I'll choose the Custom Road Shape file, and I'll click Open. Then we will configure this. I'll do that by double-clicking on it. I'll set the type to Roads, and then I'm going to choose a slightly different style here. We'll just choose the Street 2 Lane, just the Interstate version. Let's choose Close and Refresh. There we go. I will close the Data Sources palette just to maximize my real estate. And as I zoom in and orbit around this, we can see the geometry of my road is perfect for what I have defined in Civil 3D, both horizontal and vertical. Now, the issue that we have is that this is considered a spline-based road, so there isn't going to be a whole lot of editing this in InfraWorks because of the number of grips. Not a huge deal. I mean, if I need to make changes, I can always do that in Civil 3D, but I would like to make some style adjustments here. For instance, I've got a bridge going across this segment. Normally, if this was a design road, I could right-click on it and I could add bridge. In fact, I can still do that. Let me select this road. I'm going to right-click and I'll choose Split Feature. We'll split it right back there, and then I'll come over and maybe we'll split it here. I'll select, I'll right-click and choose Split. And then I will take this segment, I'll right-click and choose Convert to Design Road. And I'll convert just this piece to a design road. Now, could I have converted the entire alignment into a design road? Maybe. Remember, this geometry was considered too complex the first time I tried to bring it in, so your results may vary. For right now, this will work perfect for me. I have enough design road to create a bridge. I'm going to right-click on the road, and I'll choose Add Bridge. I'd like my bridge to start back here. I'll drag it over, and we'll have it finish right here. This will give me a bridge over the bike path and over the road. By default, it's a concrete bridge. I'm going to convert this into a steel plate. Let me select the road. I'll click it again to get access to the bridge. We'll change this to steel plate. That minimizes the number of piers. Let me click this pier. We'll move the asset card over. I'll click the pier again, and then I will use the rotate tool to better align the pier with the path. That looks pretty good. So by using a 3D shape file, I was able to leverage a complex alignment, still bring it into InfraWorks using my design information. And now by going through and segmenting this road, I can still leverage or access the power of a design road, even though this geometry started out as a spline-based road.